It appears that Doug Ford's Ontario government is going to be mandating uh, a special type of signage at gas stations as a result of the federal carbon tax. What up everyone, in this next video I want to go over a couple articles I found with regarding the Doug Ford's, uh, his government's idea of uh, posting some kind of uh, mandatory signage at gas stations with regards to Ontario's carbon tax. First is from the Post Millennial. And it reads, let's just dive right into it. Ford government will now require our gas stations to display Trudeau carbon tax price. Of course, you have to show uh, a price that's the that price that would turn stomachs of most consumers in uh, anywhere in the country. Anyway, I don't think I've even seen the gas that high in uh, in the Yukon in where I live. But well, maybe the further north you go, but at least not where I've been. Anyway, going right to the article, which was published as time of this recording five days ago. The Ford government announced today that it will be mandating that gas stations display stickers that reveal the cost of the federal carbon tax for those fill-ups. They will be also they will also be mandating that the heating bills clearly indicate the cost of the federal carbon tax. This is part of what Ford Nation refers as transparency, me transparency measures that will help consumers see exactly how much the carbon tax is costing them. Here's an example, and it shows a tweet from uh, Doug Ford. The federal carbon tax is going to cost you more than 11 cents at the pump by 2022. Our Made in Ontario environment, our Made in Ontario environment plan will reduce emissions without imposing a job-killing carbon tax on families struggling to make ends meet. And here we see another example of such a sign. A tweet from Antonella Artuso, Ontario government will require the price at the pump, uh, my apologies, Ontario government will require the price at the pump and heating bills to clearly show the cost of federal carbon tax. Another example here, you see the federal carbon tax would cost you 11 plus, an additional 11 cents per liter by 2022 and currently in 2019, 4.4 cents per liter. This is a tweet by David Haynes. The provincial government will mandate that these stickers must be placed on Ontario gas pumps. The Ford government has not followed through on its campaign process. General to review to review potentially partisan government ads. Sorry, those words tongue twisted me a little bit. The decision today comes at the same time as the price of gas reaches a record-setting high of of a dollar. $1.64.9 per liter in Vancouver. Ford stated in an email blast to his constituents that maybe these guys, meaning journalists, don't care about what gas costs them, but I know how much it matters. He went on to say it's journalists and politicians like this who make it tough for the little guy. They don't understand that there's a whole world out there filled with folks just trying to get by. It has been previously noted in the post millennial that high price gas station signs are basically free campaign ads for the conservatives. Well, you can see that this is clearly a, has a, definitely a right wing slant to it. And that's not the point of why I wanted to bring this up. I have another article from the CBC to, that goes over a lot of the same things. But it, it, I find this one article brings up a very good point that realistically, Gas prices have been going up constantly, and from my experience, especially when I was in Ontario when the HSD came about uh, about a decade ago, I would say well over a decade ago, that gas was high enough, and now it just keeps going higher and higher and higher, and the carbon tax is just going to exasperate that problem. Now, before we get too much of an analysis. I want to go to the CBC article. Again, we see the same sticker, it's the same sign, or however you want to call it. And here's the headline here Ontario gas stations could be fined 
$10,000 a day for missing anti-carbon tax stickers. The federal government minister criticizes costly propaganda campaign. It seems that, of course, the, <laughs> the representatives of both governments would not be happy about each other's actions, but you don't need to be a psychic to understand that or to have predicted that. This is an article from, again, CBC published on April 12th. Ontario will introduce legislation that would require stickers to be put on gas pumps showing that tax has... A... Alright. Now as you can see, we'll start. Bird in Ontario's budget bill are fines of up to 10000 per day for gas station operators who don't display government mandated stickers about the price of the carbon tax. The budget contains a new piece of legislation called the Federal Carbon Tax Transparency Act that would require gas stations to display the sticker at each pump. The sticker shows that a federal carbon tax added 4.4 cents per liter to the gas price now, rising to 11 cents a liter in 2022. The legislation gets the, lets the government send inspectors to see if gas stations are properly displaying the stickers and sets out penalties for non-compliance. Individuals can be fined up to $500 each day or up to $1,000 a day for subsequent, subsequent offenses. Corporations can be fined of up to $5,000 a day or up to $10,000 a day for subsequent offenses. Obstructing, obstructing an inspector would carry a fine of at least uh, $500 and up to $10,000. Sorry, this new low, this is a new low for even Premier Doug Ford, NDP energy critic Peter Tabin said in a statement, this is bad enough that we're wasting public money on partisan motion. And now he's threatened pri threatening private business owners with massive fines for failure posts Progressive Conservative Party advertisements. Similar critiques from the Federal Environment Minister, Minister, Environment Minister Catherine McKenna, who denounced the fines as ridiculous. Not only is this a violation of freedom of speech. Wow, liberals caring about freedom of speech at this point. <laughs> All I want to say on that is live in a glass house, don't throw stones. It will cost small business owners across the province who don't want to take part in the government propaganda campaign, McKenna said in the statement. This would, this would be denounced by all political parties as a new low for our political discourse. Green Party leader Mike Schreiner said Ford is wasting tax dollars on abusing legal tools to bolster his anti-carbon tax campaign. This has nothing to do with transparency, anything to do with helping his federal cousins win the election, Schreiner said in the statement. Again, don't try to tell me for a second. I know the Ontario, there is an Ontario Green Party. And don't, don't tell me for a second that the federal Greens would not help a provincial equivalent. So, again, glass house. The provincial Tories are slamming the federal carbon tax at every turn while Ford has said he is staying out of the upcoming federal election. He directly linked the two Friday in a speech to the Ontario Contractors Association. When you go to the ballot box, think of your future, he said, think of the country's future, think of your children's future, because we cannot accept this carbon tax. Let's see a picture of a pump. Energy Minister Greg Rickford's Director of Communication said the stickers are about transparency, but critics note that the stickers don't mention carbon tax rebates. The carbon tax is expected to cost a typical household $258 this year and this year and, and by $648 by 2022. Residents of provinces with, with the tax will be getting rebates on their income tax returns that start at $128 annually increase for people with spouses or dependents at home. The federal government says a family of four in Ontario could get $307 this year. Ontario is one of four provinces, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, New Brunswick, on which the Ottawa imposed levy, on which Ottawa imposed a levy because they opted not to impose their own pricing schemes on carbon emissions. Ontario is challenging the carbon tax in court next week. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, you, this, I brought up these two articles because you could clearly tell one, they're both riding a certain side politically. And I brought this up to show that realistically you can if you look at both sides you can see that both articles that write a certain side politically you can see they agree on certain facts that there there are Ford is 
doing this new campaign is doing this new campaign and pretty much that anyway I want to now get into analyzing the situation a little bit because it amazes me how the carbon tax sunk the liberals under Stefan Zion and realistically they did not survive or shouldn't say survive they did not recover until Justin Trudeau and I don't understand I realistically still do not understand how this is supposed to help this goes back to liberals being weak on their messaging carbon tax they have never been strong in explaining on how this is supposed to reduce or help the environment they have done nothing to address the criticisms the Alberta carbon tax has got how at least in the town I lived our heating bills went up we ended up paying more in administration fees than we actually used power and heating and next to nobody at least in the town I lived in that I knew of got a rebate so forgive me if I don't believe a word on what the liberals say about these rebates I'm if I'm proven wrong I'm proven wrong I'll admit that I was wrong but I'm incredibly cynical and skeptical about this and as I said earlier gas prices have been going up and up and up and I'm sure everybody not who looks at a car looks at people who complain about the carbon tax and say well what's your alternative well to protect the environment to be honest a carbon tax it wouldn't be a carbon tax carbon tax doesn't go to solve any of the actual issues we're facing public transit is all well and good but a lot of us have jobs where you would not qualify for it if you don't have a vehicle of your own also the way our cities are laid out look at giant cities like Toronto where you may work in one end of the city but can only afford to live in another you can't walk to work and if you have one of these people that needs a car to actually have a job where it's actually a prerequisite you're going to have no choice but to drive. And what alternatives are there? Does the GO train go to your area? Do you have easy subway access? Are you going to have a two hour bus ride to get to work? And are you going to be able to afford to do all these things? This is the thing that bothers you with the carbon tax is realistically our cities have grown way too big our communities have grown way too big where you can't just walk somewhere to go to work you get your groceries or whatnot you have to drive you have to take vehicles a carbon tax is going to do nothing to actually fix the problem a carbon tax in from in my opinion is like a psychologist giving you medication to treat a mental illness without actually treating any of the without treating what's causing your mental illness if you're depressed because maybe you work in an industry that is flailing around in its dying stages and you're not getting paid enough and money is your stressor Taking pills is not going to fix that. Finding another job in a field that you enjoy that gives you decent financial reward to where you can now live without that worry is going to fix the problem. A carbon tax is not going to fix the environment, especially if we don't change our society, the way our society lives. If you want to truly fix the environment, you're going to have to grow food locally. You're going to have to live in smaller communities. You're going to have to necessitate not using, you could be in a society where you're not going to need to use fossil fuels. And until that time, we're going to need fossil fuels. Like it or not. And all a carbon tax is going to do 
the way I see it, because I saw it happen in Alberta, is you're going to pay more for you're going to pay more for hydro. You're going to pay more for power. You're going to pay more at the pump. You're going to pay more for all the goods you need because they still need to be transported. Since we don't necessarily grow everything we need locally, you import a lot of things. This is all that's going to happen. Again, if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. But Carbon tax, in my opinion, is the wrong way to go. It doesn't affect, it doesn't go to fix anything. It's putting a band-aid on a flesh wound. It's so not a flesh wound. <laughs> putting a band-aid on a gunshot. This isn't to say that we don't, this isn't to say that the environment doesn't need our help, but we need a better plan than this. And Just because, just because I may not have a salute, an alternative to propose, does not mean that the carbon tax is an option that should be implemented. Because the way Trudeau and a lot of the other governments, territorially and provincially, that are ha that have carbon tax, they're promising rebates. They're setting themselves up for scandal when you don't get rebates. So, that's my take on a carbon tax, and personally, I think I'm not necessarily a fan of Doug Ford. I'm not a fan of Doug Ford wasting taxpayer money on these stickers that I don't know how effective they're going to be, but I find it hilarious. And we'll see what happens. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please like it. If uh, you don't well there's the thumbs down if you agree disagree or just want to continue the conversation please leave a comment down below also subscribe to the youtube channel you can also follow me on facebook minds and twitter links will be down below in the description thank you again have yourself a good day until next time